Greetings and welcome there, academic proletariat, and welcome to this episode of the Fireside Chats with Mr. Olson, where we will be discussing the ever-so-confusing Louisiana Purchase. Now, the Louisiana Purchase is so confusing because you never really know who owned it and why. So let's get started by telling you who owned it and why. Initially, it's explored by the Spanish in the mid-1500s after they had landed in Mexico and come north, and it's held on to them in sort of a de facto ownership from about... 1541 until the mid to late 1600s when the French show up and the French are able to easily penetrate the area via the St. Lawrence River and uh, they're able to settle in what will become the Louisiana Territory because the Spanish really didn't. They explored it but they didn't settle because there was little worth there because they were looking for gold and there was none. However, the French settle in because there's a lot of uh, fur there and that's how they make their money. And for a while, the French are there until, of course, 1763, when the French and Indian War ends, and the French, having lost the war, are forced to cede the territory to the Spanish, who had allied themselves with the British. And so after the French and Indian War, it now becomes Spanish land, and it remains Spanish land through the American Revolution up until the year 1800. The only thing that changes is, of course, the British are no longer the owners of the adjacent land, but the United States becomes the owners of that land. Now, the Spanish and the United States have kind of a tenuous re relationship together. It's not great most of the time, and the Spanish try and put pressure on the United States and New Orleans and whatnot, but as the Spanish Empire declines and the United States is on the rise, the Spanish become very wary of the Louisiana Territory. They think that the Americans are going to move closer and closer to um, modern-day Mexico, which is the place that the Spanish really want to hold on to. So they're looking for a buffer. In comes Napoleon, who, of course, complicates everything. After coming to power in Europe, Napoleon puts a lot of pressure on the, the European countries around France, one of them being Spain, which leads Spain to offer the Louisiana territory up to Napoleon to sort of pacify him. So um, Spain's thinking here is that the Spanish will be able to better deal with the Americans as they're becoming increasingly expansionist. Now, it's going to feed Napoleon's uh, reinvigorated dreams of having an American empire. He also wants to, a place to supply San Domingue with uh, rations. Of course, San Domingue is what's going to become Haiti after a revolution that we're going to talk to in a second. But what I think is most hilarious is that France wants a place to dump all their prisoners and malcontents. So similar to in Australia for the British, Louisiana is going to be a place to dump the bad French people. Okay, now, Napoleon wants himself a new empire, and it all hinges upon the sugar island of Saint-Domingue, which of course is going to undergo a revolution, and it was undergoing a revolution that Napoleon thought he was going to win, but after roughly 10 years of struggle against this handsome-looking dude, Toussaint, he loses, and after losing Haiti, Napoleon becomes more focused on Europe and decides that he can part with Louisiana, and which of course he thinks he can get money from, the Americans who want to buy it. Now, this, of course, enrages Spain because they thought they were going to have a buffer. No more buffer. Spain, we're coming for you. So Thomas Jefferson authorizes the American purchase of the land from France. So he sends his buddy, uh, James Monroe, to Louisiana or to France to discuss the Louisiana Purchase. Now, here are the reasons Americans wanted it, okay? They they really wanted this Western lands. They, they didn't want the French close to them because the French were a powerful empire and the Americans just didn't want to deal with another war. They also wanted unabated access to the Port of New Orleans. The Port of New Orleans was a place that uh, anybody who used the Mississippi River traded their stuff. So it, it proved to be a very valuable trade route, that Mississippi, especially when things got to the Port of New Orleans. It was especially useful for Western farmers who lived in areas like Indiana. In addition to that, Jefferson wanted the land because he wanted more available land for small farmers. He thought that if you were able to dig your hands into a land, it made you better. It made you a better citizen. So he thought that by buying this, he was just going to have land forever and ever for all the Americans that were to come. Eh, spoiler alert, that doesn't really happen. But anyways, here's how, how we got it. He sends his buddy James Mon Monroe and the Secretary of State Robert Livingston to France to talk about buying Louisiana. He tells them when they go that they're allowed to spend $6 million, but Monroe, being Jefferson's buddy, is like, oh, I can spend 15 He won't care. In the end, he... Jefferson really didn't care. He thought it was a lot of money, but that's the equivalent of about $250 million today. He got a pretty good deal. Anyways, when the deal goes down, Jefferson is kind of reluctant to make it. He, he sort of questions its constitutionality because it's going to force him to abandon his strict construction standpoint, and it's going to force him to use Alexander Hamilton's bank, both of which are things he doesn't want to do. But eventually, 
After James Monroe tells him that Napoleon is going to back out of the deal, Jefferson sends a treaty to the Senate. It's ratified, and Louisiana becomes America's. Funny side note of this, the Americans weren't 100% sure of what the boundaries were, and when they asked France what the, bo the boundaries were, the Frenchies were like, no. And they didn't tell them, which, of course, is very interesting because, remember, it's right on a border with Spain, who doesn't want any fights with America. So, spoil spoiler alert, there's going to be some sort of fight there later. Now, um, questioning of the purchase didn't only come from Jefferson, but it came from uh, his political opponents as well. Most Federalists disagreed with the purchase because they saw it as unconstitutional. They were sort of using Jefferson's rhetoric against him, except ironically for Hamilton, who loved the idea of it because he thought that a bigger American empire had more places to trade and whatnot. So he, he was great with it, but other Federalists really questioned it. Now, the Louisiana Purchase was actually proved to have some difficulties with it because how are you going to rule this big area that had a very diverse population full of Catholics? Remember, Americans were afraid of Catholics at this point. They're going to be afraid of Catholics for like another hundred years, and they don't know what to do with them. There's Catholics, there's free blacks, there's French people, there's Cajuns. They can't understand them when they talk. They eat gumbo. What are we going to do? So Jefferson puts forth the possibility of ruling the territory with military governors, which, of course, costs a lot of money, is an expansion of federal power, something that he is not wanting to do. But the Constitution says that whenever there's a purchase made of territory, that the inhabitants in that land would be integrated into the, to, into the United States as soon as possible. So he's got to figure out a way to do it. Anyways, he overcomes all of this basically by assimilation, and forcing them to be as white as possible, which is the way that America deals with stuff. Okay, now to the most famous part of the Louisiana Purchase, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And now for the most recognizable part of the Louisiana Purchase, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. After Jefferson realized that he was going to be able to keep him some Louisiana, he commissioned an expedition of the territory. Now, they didn't just stop. At the purchase, they kept on going because this is America and that that's what we do. So he chooses two guys, Meriwether Lewis and George Rogers Clark, to lead the expedition. One was a Revolutionary War veteran and the other was an uneducated but well-traveled explorer of the day. And they're going to be the guys who are in charge. And once he chooses them, they set out from St. Louis in 1804, and along the way they face numerous obstacles. They don't really know the terrain, and although fur traders had previously been there, Jefferson thought that the Rocky Mountains were just going to be like hills, so it, it wasn't, ain't no thing to him. There were translation issues because... Clark and Lewis could not talk to any of the Indians, so they had to have like a five-way translation system to get words to different people. There were discipline issues among the, the crew who were following them, but actually the two worked well together, Lewis and Clark, that is, and actually kept issues to a minimum. There was only one death of a man who had appendicitis along the way, and despite all of their, their issues, they were eventually assisted by Sacagawea, who is portrayed here, and that is the Louisiana Purchase. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Otherwise... Enjoy the day.